guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch again. It's the middle of winter. Well, it's not the middle, it's uh, December. Christmas coming up pretty soon. And uh, I thought uh, I'd try to get some topics that are appropriate for the season. No, we're not going to go and cut down a Christmas tree. We already did that. If you want to see uh, what, what the kind of things that our family does with respect to Christmas, go to my Facebook page, Alec Pierce. Uh, anyway, uh, however, if you live in the country, you probably already know about these devices. Um, you may not. If you don't, you should know about them. And if you don't live in the country, you may not anyway. Here's the scoop. First of all, it's cold up here. If you live in, a, if you, if you live in Florida, go, go to another YouTube channel. Okay, this doesn't apply to you. But if you live in, in cold country, Carolina, Virginia, sorry guys, I, I know about your problems down there that you're having with the snow this year, or, or north, you know, Canada, New York, Maine, all those places. If you live where it gets cold, then this tip will be valuable to you. Now, again, if you live where it's cold, then you know that you need to plug in your various engines, definitely ga uh, diesel engines and usually gasoline engines too, cars and trucks and so on. You may or may not be aware of it, but it's good to plug them in. Everybody thinks you plug them in to keep them warm so they start easily. That's partially true, but it's also much easier on the engine. It increases the life of the engine. If you typically keep your car as a truck for two, three, four, five years, don't worry about it. But if you like to keep your car a truck for a long period of time, get a, plug, get a, get a heater, get a car heater. Now, that's, a, that's an engine heater, block heater it's called, uh, and, and plug it in when it's going to be cold. Now, here's the problem. First of all, we have Diana's car, we have my pickup. We have the tractor, which is diesel. We have three other machines that we use for the wintertime, the UTV, the ATV, and the snowmobile. And we have the, uh, the uh, uh, travel trailer, which we keep on a charger as well. Uh, the bulldozer I have on a solar charger. See, I don't keep it warm. I won't run that in the wintertime. Point is, we have a lot of machinery. And we use them all the time. And we need to keep them warm. You know? The uh, hydro company, the electrical uh, supplier for our area, likes us. They really like us because when those things are running, they're reading hydro. Even the chargers that we have on the various machines, the e hydro as well. Point to all that is we would like to be able to have, keep those machines heated so they're ready to start and better for the machine without using much hydro. So here's the scenario, okay? My pickup truck sometimes doesn't run for four, five, six days a week, sometimes. Uh, same with Diana's car. She may not run very much. We use the tractor more than the uh, vehicles, actually, because the tractor we use not daily, but a couple, three times a week for blowing and picking stuff up and so on. The tractor stuff. The other machinery we don't start very often, but we've got to keep them warm. So you plug them in, right? You can do that. But if you plug it in, then it's drawing current all the time. Those heaters are generally at least 500 watts, more commonly 1,000 or 1,500 watts. They draw a lot of electricity. Four or five or six of them, they start to pay a lot. What can you do? Well, there are some things that you can do. You can put them on timers, but that presumes that you know when you're going to need it, right? So that it turns the heater on maybe an hour before. It takes a bit of time for the block and the oil to get warmed up. Quit playing with the camera. I saw that flash there. Kevin's fooling around back there. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so what can you do? Well, if you're not aware of it, there are things you can do. This is what we use. Thermostatically controlled outlet. This particular one is well known. It's called Thermocube. Thermocube. Should I move it closer, Kevin, or do you want to zoom in on that? Thermocube. And, and this is available anywhere. You can buy it on eBay, Amazon, your local uh, TSC farm supply store. I don't think Home Depot has it, but any thermal cube, this one's called. And it's a pretty neat little device. They have three different temperature ranges, so you got to decide the one that you want. Let me show you what, what I mean. You got, you got it? Okay, this is, this is the actual device, thermal cube, you see? Now, and, and this one, I've marked it on there, this one comes on at 20 degrees. This is all Fahrenheit. I talk Fahrenheit. I know I live in Canada, but I talk Fahrenheit. I'm old, okay? I'm in my 70s. So 20 degrees, which is below freezing, but it's not stupidly cold. You know, it's just below freezing a little bit. If it gets below zero, I want those heaters on. But uh, 20 degrees, uh, that's, that's good enough. There are other ones. There's one that comes on, I think, at 35 degrees, which is above freezing. There's one, I don't know what they are for sure, but you check it out, thermal cube. So what do you do? Well, you plug this into your, the outlet. Or you can even put it on an extension cord, but more commonly put it right into the outlet, and then it has two outlets on it. So right away, you've got like a cube tap. You've got two outlets now. And then you plug your extension cord in, one to the tractor, one to the car, and, or, or one to the truck, whatever you have to do. And you go to bed. It doesn't take any electricity at all. It's not like a power bar or a transformer. If, if, if the relay in here has not clicked on, and that only happens at 
20 degrees below freezing. If it hasn't clicked on, no power is being used whatsoever. If the temperature drops below 20, they come on and keep your vehicles warm. Or you can have, the, if you want, you can get the one that comes on, there's one that comes on at zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite cold. You definitely want a heater of that on the diesel for sure. But there's a thermal cube. Plug it into the wall, plug in two or more, but certainly it's designed for two extension cords. Run them through your various machinery. You don't use any electricity until it gets really cold. Now there is another device, and I think in fairness to these people, I should show it too. This one is called um, Block Elect. Now that sounds weird because I think this one is made in Quebec, so it has it has a, a, a different sounding name. Block Elect. I'm going to show it to you, Kev. You take a look. It's just so that folks can see. There you go. And this is very slightly different, okay? Th this is like a short extension cord. You see a short extension cord. Now the one nice thing about this, I don't know, can you come over here, Kev? Yeah. It's got a little neon light in the plug. You've all seen those. A little neon light in it. So when you plug it into the wall, you know that this device has got power. Okay? And then, so that's the first thing. And then you plug your block heater or whatever it is you want to keep warm. When it's cold, you plug it into this. So it's just a, it's just a jumper, if you like. And this particular one comes on at minus 12 centigrade or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the one I would use if, 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 I, if I want the thing, the, the, the thing to be heated when it gets quite cold when it gets really cold, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, 10 degrees above zero, or minus 12 centigrade. Then this one, the re little relay clicks, and power goes to the heater, wherever it happens to be. So there you go. Two simple ideas. Thermostatically controlled electrical outlets. You can use them on, we use one on the, um, <clears throat> I just thought about that, Kev. Uh, we use one on the uh, uh, horse tank, <laughs> the horse water tank heater. Now you can put the water tank heater in, and the water tank heater has a thermostat on it. But that thing, I, I never really trusted it too much, first of all. And secondly, if the water gets down to about 35 degrees above freezing, it comes on to keep the water from freezing. And that's really smart. But, but it's on and on. And so I put one of these in before that. So, so the temperature gets down to freezing or even a little bit below before the water tank heater comes on. We have, we have one of these on the chicken coop as well so that the, uh, the chicken water and their light to keep them laying eggs and things like that. So there's all kinds of uses of these, certainly if you're a farmer, if you're a rancher, if you have a hobby farm and chickens and animals and so on, and vehicles and you live in a cold climate, one of these devices might be really handy for you. I discovered them by accident and I think I have about six of them around the ranch right now. I, it's cost me a lot of money, but I'm saving money and they last forever. So maybe there's an idea there for you. Maybe you think of some use for them yourself. Keep in touch. Send me those comments. I love it. I'll talk to you again soon, Alec Pierce, at the ranch.